Welcome back. And now for our What's Up Doc with middle school students. That's awesome. All right, thank you. Madavi, do you have any questions for Dr. Seville? Uh, yes, how does stress affect my body? Thank you, Madavi, for taking part in this great activity that we have here in Pinellas County, which reminds me of how we live in the best county and have the best school system, and I'm happy to be involved. You know, stress can involve your body in many ways and affect it so many, so many ways. The thing to me is you want to get control of the stress because I know you think to yourself, sometimes when I'm worried about a test, I feel like I have to run off to the bathroom before or in the middle of the test. It's not uncommon to have gastrointestinal issues, almost diarrhea sometime, because you're worried about a test or a terrible headache. Sometimes people develop a bad headache because of that issue. Sometimes people feel tingling in their lips or their hands or their feet as part of anxiety or find themselves breathing faster. You know, the truth is when you're feeling those issues, I hope that you will speak to your parents or speak to a teacher because every single human being on the face of the earth, including myself, would benefit from understanding anxiety, understanding being nervous and what helps you get better. Because one day you're gonna be out of middle school in just a couple of months, right? And then you'll be in high school. And then I hope you're gonna go off to college when you won't have your parents necessarily right around you with whom you can speak. So by learning the things that help you deal with stress now can pay huge dividends in your life for the next many decades. So stress affects you in a lot of ways. Learning how to deal with it can help you in every one of them. Demaya, do you have a question for Dr. Seville? Yes. My parents are getting divorced and I have a headache most of the time and I don't feel like eating. Is it because of stress? Demaya, that's a great question. And how many people do we know who are going through this very same issue as you? Maybe your parents are currently getting divorced or they've been divorced and they're fighting all the time. We know that many more than half of marriages end in divorce. And the kids always get in the middle, don't they? So what you're telling me is normal, the headache, the lack of appetite. But let's talk about something far more important because this happens in my office all the time. I hope that you are seeing a counselor and I hope that your parents are seeing a counselor individually or as a family. Sometimes there isn't money for that and people don't understand that those sorts of services are available for free. The schools can help out, but there's just too many kids with issues for the schools to be fully involved. But I want you to tell your mom that. I want you to tell your teacher because it's important to also speak to the pediatrician or your doctor so they can help you find the right counseling because everyone has to deal with this issue because your parents are going to share the kids in common for the rest of their lives. And obviously they didn't get along well enough to stay married, but now they're going to have to get along well enough to help their kids grow up. Because the truth is it's easy for you to say, I'm never getting married after I see this, or I'm never going to get divorced. But the truth is none of us ever know what the future holds. You might find yourself on the other side of this problem, one day in the future, even though you wouldn't like to. Talk to your parents, have them talk to your doctor, and then make sure everyone, especially you individually, is sitting down to learn about stress in your life. Because once again, that which you learn now can pay huge dividends for the rest of your life. You're always gonna be stressed beyond this. One day you'll go live on your own and your parents won't be in your life the way they are now. But there'll be tests, there'll be jobs, you might have your own children one day. And the lessons you learn now can help you for decades to come. Nicholas, do you have a question for Dr. Seville? Yes, when people bigger hit me or try and threaten me, I just run away. Why does that happen? Nicholas, thank you so much for being here and asking that question. And I want to thank you a lot. I think probably you've heard about this flight or fight response, meaning some people run away and some people stand and fight. In biology, maybe they mention it. Certainly they'll mention it in high school. You know, we always have two choices when we come up against some kind of challenge. Obviously, I'm going to tell you that fighting is never the answer. Even when you're afraid somebody's going to make fun of you because you were the chicken who ran away, it's always better to run away and live to speak another day than let somebody get the better of you. Sometimes that's not the option. Maybe somebody is bullying or fighting somebody else and you're going to step in and help them. 
it doesn't make you a coward to want to step away from confrontation. It makes you somebody who's going to have a longer life, quite frankly. More importantly is the fact that you tell your teacher if the teacher hasn't seen what's going on, or if you're outside of school, you speak to your parent or somebody else, if someone's bothering you after you leave the scene of that confrontation. What your body is telling you is that I don't feel like having my face smashed or I don't feel like having a bone broken or I don't feel like getting into a scuffle with somebody because you were made as a person of peace and not as a person of confrontation. And that's what the world needs to be more about, quite frankly. But I hope you'll let somebody know this happened because that other person might need some, some help. The person who has confronted you might be having a problem in his or her own life and by you telling on that person, that help can come. So you could save a life by trying to help out after that confrontation. So you are normal when your body has told you that it's time to run away in confrontation. Many people are the other side of the coin. Every time somebody says something to them, they want to have a fight. I'm sure you know people like that. People who actually come to school excited about getting into an argument every single day. What a horrible way to go through life. I'm happy you're not one of those people. You have to always ask yourself why. And if this confrontation is ha happening at home, I hope you'll speak out to somebody else so we can find out why that is happening as well. Remember, you are normal. The normal thing to do is to want to walk away from confrontation. And I thank you for being one of those kind of people. That makes the world a better place to be. Thank you, Dr. Seville. And we appreciate your, your words, especially about divorce, because 50% because yeah. of marriages end in divorce. I think so many of our students are suffering Absolutely. and don't know how to, to handle that stress and, and who to talk to. Of course. So thank you very much. Well, next yeah. we're going to move into some high school questions. Brandon, do you have any questions for Dr. Seville? Yes. Is there any such thing as good stress? Hello, Brandon. 12th grade, almost ready to be done with the Pinellas County School System. You've been the luckiest guy in the world to be here, and I know that you know that, and I hope that there are great things in your future. I appreciate that you took the time to talk to us today a few months before graduation. And I think you already know the answer to this question, I'll bet. And the answer is yes, of course there's good stress. Because when I tell people who tell me that I'm taking a test and my stomach hurts or I'm worried and they ask me what to do, I say you should look up and say thank you. Because it tells me, again, that you care about the test, you care about the result, and you care about what your teacher has taught you and the time you've invested in studying to regurgitate that information on paper or on the computer. Stress helps us be a better person at times. I think when we get into a car to drive, you say, I'm stressed out if I have to drive down US 19 in rush hour. Well, a little stress is a good thing. It might make you more aware of what's going on around you and less likely to want to text illegally or make a phone call and concentrate just on being in the car. It wakes you up in the morning because you're stressed out when you know you have a test at 7 o'clock in the morning and you were sleepy before you got to school, and that's a great thing. But sometimes stress can be too much. It can make you sick. People get nauseous to the point of throwing up. People worry about their future so much, especially at your age, wondering what the next step is, they can't sleep at night. And days go by with having anxiety and panic attacks in the middle of the night and come to school looking like they've been in some kind of a war. In that case, stress is not a good thing and it's important to speak to your parents or speak to your teacher, a guidance counselor at school or an administrator. Perhaps some friend of yours comes to you and tells you these things and I hope you'll care enough about that friendship to stand up for him or her about these issues. Christopher, do you have a question for Dr. Seville? I do. I've heard of the term in my health class, toxic stress. Do you mind explaining what that is? Hello, Christopher. That's a great question. You know, toxic stress really isn't a term, but it's something people say. And I, and I think you and I both know it means when stress is too much and it gets to you. That instead of just having a little bit of a bellyache before a test, you have to run and have diarrhea or you feel like vomiting, or if you're getting ready to give a speech in school and you stand up and feel like you're getting lightheaded and almost pass out, that might be a bit of toxic stress or stress that is too much for your body and you should do something about it. So when you think that you are under an uh, amount of stress which is not normal for you, 
because it's normal to have stress before a test or before having to talk in front of people. Then it's time to speak to your teachers or your parents or a guidance counselor about that issue. Why do you do that? Well, first of all, you're normal. People have stress all the time. But there are mental health professionals whose expertise is teaching you how to deal with stress. Does it matter? Of course it does. Do you think stress goes away when you leave high school? Of course it doesn't. Do you think your parents or your teachers are under stress? All the time. So the point is, if you can go talk to somebody who can teach you about how to deal with this toxic stress when you are in high school, it'll pay huge dividends when you are in college, when you're raising a family one day, when you're in the workplace, and you'll thank us for that then. Shaylee, do you have a question for Dr. Seville? Yeah, so I do multiple sports and I'm also in AP and honors classes. I was wondering if there's any ways that could help me prevent from being overwhelmed. Hello, Shaylee. Thanks for being here. Getting to the end of 11th grade, SATs, ACTs, wondering what you're going to do with your life. There's no stress in that. So I want to thank you very much for taking the time to be here. You know, I want to tell you something. I'm a physician, of course, and I remember burning the candle at both ends when I was your age and wondering what to do about that. There's nothing wrong in life with trying to bite off more than you can chew by taking the hard courses and also being involved in other activities. So I praise you for doing that. But if you believe that your grades are suffering or if your ability to be in those other activities is not what it could be because you're doing too much, it's time to step away. And you never want to feel bad about that because in the end you have to be true to yourself. So part of the reason you take hard classes now is because it can make college seem a bit easier. And I think you know that. There are many people who go off to college and never took a hard class the last two years and they're not ready for the rigors of that kind of study. Not just because of classes, but because of all the other things. Staying up too late, nobody telling you you have to go to school anymore. But because you're taking harder classes now, that means that you will find what comes next a little bit easier. And that's important as well. When it comes to outside activities, and sports is what you're talking about, I don't want you to do so much sports that you don't do well in school or so much school that you think your sports are suffering. But remember this. There is no greater release for stress and anxiety about what goes on in the classroom than athletics. By keeping yourself physically fit, it keeps your mind active. I always tell people the story of my daughter. She graduated from high school many years ago, went off to a university in Boston and rode and took very hard classes and she wants to be a neurosurgeon. My point to you is that she would tell me, Dad, I do better in school during the season of rowing because I have much less time to study and I know how to budget my time. And in the off season, I have so much extra time that I often lose track of what I'm doing and my grades suffer. Maybe you find that same phenomenon to be true for you. So maybe you can utilize sports as a way to force you to organize yourself for your academic pursuits and have even better results in that arena. Your mileage may vary, as they say, and something different may be true for you. But I want you to think about that. So I praise you for wanting to step out of the classroom and also be in the sports arena. Because I hope when you go off to college that you will participate in athletic activities, whether formally or informally, through intramurals, because that's something you need for the rest of your life. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us, because there are many, many people who are listening to your question and wondering what I would say about that as well. Good luck in your future. I know it's going to be bright. Thank you, Dr. Seville. Great yeah. advice, as always. I feel like I need to go for a run, though, to right. kind of work out some of my stress. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, what should students do or parents do if they need to reach out to somebody now? Well, I always appreciate being here because we have such wonderful topics, and it reminds us of how we participate, and you help to run one of the greatest school systems in this country. Thank you. And I appreciate that. I think what we've learned here today is everyone has stress, and it's hard to know what is normal and what is abnormal. If kids, if kids have questions, they should speak to their parents or to their teachers because sometimes their parents are the ones stressing them out as we learned about the divorce question earlier and the schools are ready to talk to them they have counselors they have people involved and can get them to the right place we're going to play some websites up during this uh, interview playing back as well and people will know where to go to look for the right information as well
But I think the take home message should be everyone has stress. The more you brush it under the carpet, the worse things become. The best thing you can do is face it, talk about it with the right people, and understand that your life gets better the day you start dealing with those issues. Thank you again. This was Community Connections, and I'm Lori Matley. Join us next time.